Hey guys, a year has come to an end, 2020. So um, I'm able to uh, have this final numbers in uh, for my uh, one of my favorite sheets uh, is the long-term historical returns uh, for stocks and also gold uh, and also interest rates and also inflation. Um, and uh, yeah, 2020 was um, a very good year for uh, gold, up 25%, and stocks up 16%. That is also good. Um, if you have a PP, which is about the PP world, I call it, is what I recommend, is 25% gold and 75% stocks, but a very broad index is called all country all country world index you find at the bottom i put the link also in the video below of this sheet uh it's 16 percent i'm not talking about sp smp 500 or so uh, this is a very broad index also has uh, emerging markets in it but it is capitalized based so actually yeah the big companies are the highest market cap companies are well very well presented um, so, um, if you have such a safe portfolio, uh, permanent portfolio that always has positive returns after inflation, with the exception of 2008, since 1940, if you count for the last 10 years, um, very stable portfolio, the green line, you would have had in the 2020 18% uh, uh, and after inflation, uh, uh, well, you have to deduct about uh, five percent for inflation. Yeah? Um, so that's an interesting number. Eighteen percent, for example, Warren Buffett uh, only has fifteen percent in twenty twenty. Yeah? So he did again less than a simple index portfolio. Huh? Um, that's uh, interesting. Um, I find uh, the average return of the PP is uh, 8% over the last 10 years, and that's more than what uh, Berkshire Hathaway has done. So I think, uh, with taking a lot less risk, eh? uh, so I think uh, the PP continues to shine uh, for those that do not want to uh, uh, put any time in investing. Uh, this is a good solution, uh, and also reduce risks a lot. I believe this is a great portfolio. I'm not using it myself because I'm an active investor and I don't have any piece of my portfolio that I want to just lock in uh, the value. Um, I don't have that. I want to use all my capital to try to increase its value. This is not something you will achieve with the PP. I mean, of course, 8% is good over the last 10 years. Um, and actually, the past 100 years, it's 9%. But um, uh, inflation being at 5%, and personally, I think it's actually 6%, you make only 2% per year, which is almost nothing. Huh? Um, so I really want much higher returns than that. And I feel that I'm able to achieve, well, I have proven to be able to achieve that, uh, a lot higher returns. Uh, and I do not take higher risks in exchange for that. I'm not like 100% in invest in Tesla or in Bitcoin or in Amazon or in, and no, I have a very diversified portfolio and many of my positions are valued relatively low, uh, such as my airlines, my oil tankers, uh, even in my cryptocurrency, most of it is Bitcoin Cash. You can't say it's valued high. If the all time high was 4,000 today, it's at 300 or 400. Eh? So um, uh, I think that uh, for me, I can outperform it, but in the long term, um, um, or let's say that I really want to like retire or I really want to put in less energy in investing because it does take lots of energy. And then I think this is a good uh, solution um, uh, to, to, to do. Uh, for, uh, for inflation was very high in 2020. Um, but of course you have to average that out because it's typical that during a deflationary collapse, they print a lot and because they print a lot in that scenario actually markets just don't go down as much as they would normally do so uh, uh, and even consumer prices usually go down a lot during crisis because there's much less demand for it 
uh, but uh, that didn't happen also huh? um, so 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 that's because they print lots of money uh, but this money printing you have to average out and if you look at the past uh, 10 years it's only 11 percent per year huh? um, and yeah sometimes this goes up very high but sometimes it goes also very low huh? um, like here it's like zero percent per year they printed in the 60s huh? the last 10 years here minus two percent even they have done the last 10 years so it's 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 also via booms and busts actually the amount of money that's being printed and you do have to average it out uh, and if you do that then you see okay it's 11 percent the past 10 years the past 30 years is nine percent but the past 100 years it's six percent huh? and i use the six percent because when i verify prices i have done these exercises I can't really say that inflation is 8%. That's too high of an estimate. On average, prices of consumer goods, of utilities, of assets, of um, services, they do not go up by 8% per year. They go up by 5% per year on average. Yeah? So that's, that's, that's very important to verify your theory with reality. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and that checks out. If you look at the amount of money printed, uh, it's about uh, eight. Actually, it's two percent higher here. Eh? It's eight percent per year, where I de deduct two percent every year for economic growth, and six percent is realistic. So, uh, lots of money printed this year, but very likely we will see that over the next few years they will print a lot less, and even probably like after the two thousand eight crisis, before they print a lot here also. But then later they start to reduce it. Yeah, you have another outlier year in 2013, but there were many years of actually not even money printing, but money uh, destruction. Uh, they, they took out money out of circulation. That's why you get such a low average, even though you have sometimes very high numbers. If you also some years destroy uh, money in circulation, then of course that brings down the average a lot. So I expect that that to happen over the next few years. Um, uh, interest rates have gone back to zero and they were actually zero for a very long time uh, since the financial crisis in 2008 they were zero but they were starting to move up again uh, the past three years but with the corona crisis they're back at zero uh, so yeah uh, interesting um, this is the most important chart I believe uh, where you can clearly see the, the what's in a boom and a bust, in a boom and a bust, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, where we are in the cycles. And it's all still the same story as my previous videos. Uh, it's, um, yeah, um, it's going, uh, stocks are clearly in a bull market and about in the middle of the bull market. Colts are in a bear market and about in the middle of a bear market. And interest rates likely bottomed out and they bottomed out also here uh, and they went up then for four years now they went down for four years but they probably found a bottom at zero percent huh? they've been at this at this for 10 years now almost huh? Home over 10 years huh? at zero percent so that's the bottom huh? can't go much lower uh, so a great uh, short uh, or uh, long-term bonds because it's very likely interest rates will go up in the long term uh, i have a short position but it's not so big yet it's only 12 percent but um i'm planning to uh, up that um i'm just looking at the elections here um there is still some uh, market turbulence possible here before joe biden gets into office uh by the end of the month of january uh and um and and of course interest rates have gone up a lot since the corona bottom it was half a percent for 10 year uh, treasuries and now it's back at one percent so I'm, I'm waiting for a little um um how do you say that um uh, correction here yeah and then uh, i'm probably also going to short bonds uh, big as i do with gold i also short gold a lot because i believe that yeah we're clearly in a bear market for gold uh and and in this year 2020 was a very good year but that doesn't change anything to the long-term trend and uh, we're actually at all-time highs for uh, gold at $1,900. It went a little bit higher to $2,000 or $2,100. That was the peak, and and that was that was yeah a couple months ago. Uh, but um, yeah, I think that's a great short. 
and a great long are still stocks. We, we are not at the top of the stock bull market. Clearly, mm -hmm. we're only halfway. It's going to go a lot higher over the next five to ten years. Huh? And what you want to... Of course, it can be the next four years flat. Eh? It could be flat for the next three years. But there will come a year where it goes up a lot. Huh? Um, um, so... I mean, go, when the, these are 10 year returns, when the average 10 year returns go up a lot, huh? uh, the way that goes is you shop off some bad years, uh, 10 year average returns are rolling returns. So you shop off some, you have some more very good years and then you, you get rid of some bad years. And, uh, and that causes the average returns of the past 10 years to go up a lot. So a couple more years of great returns is very likely. Uh, for the stock market. So um, many people, me included, say, oh my God, the stock market goes, has gone up a lot uh, this year. Well, yeah, it's 16%. That's not crazy. Yeah, it can go double as much in one year. It can go 30% up also in a year. But of course, taking into account the Corona crisis, many businesses going broke, it is still quite a performance. But um, yeah, what are the businesses that go broke during a crisis? It's the weak businesses. It's the old business models. Huh? So it's not such a disaster. Uh, of course, for the personal lives of people, it's a disaster, and some businesses are actually uh, shouldn't have gone broke uh, with these uh, lockdowns and 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 and. I mean, that's extreme scenario where even quality companies get in, in hard time. Um, but of course, what they also did was lots of money printing, and you could also get money and loans from the government to keep uh, your your business uh, alive. And uh, and markets have been quite liquid, still very liquid. There was not a financial crisis of 2008 where banks stopped, stopped lending to each other, no. Huh? So uh, money has been a flush uh, and therefore um, even high quality companies that got into trouble were probably able to still survive. Look at those cruise lines, for example, who are like decimated, but few have gone broke. Huh? Uh, but have no income whatsoever already for a year, almost. Uh, that's thanks to credit lines, and that are still cheap. Interest rates at 0%. Eh? Uh, money is cheap and uh, uh, widely available. So, um, um, yeah, everything is on track. I think uh, the biggest risk is here to uh, be left out of the stock bull market. Uh, because, yeah, uh, overall sentiment is worrisome, is actually quite negative, despite the markets have gone up so much. Uh, 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 and that's typical. A bull ride uh, climbs on a wall of worry, and there is certainly still a wall of worry, so likely the bull will continue with a correction maybe here and there. Uh, same for crypto, by the way, been going up a lot also, climbs a wall of worry likely. Uh, but that's not the case for gold, eh, because you have to look at the long-term trends. Eh? These are the fundamentals. Eh? Uh, and also, there is not much wall of worry when you look at the gold market. People are uh, ecstatic and euphoric. Huh? The gold investors. Uh, so that's a different climate than the stock market. Um, that was it. I don't have to make this much longer than it is. I don't have anything to add. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope this uh, sheet inspires you to take the right uh, positions uh, for in uh, 2021 now uh, to uh, profit from uh, the markets. Have a great day.